the guy with the gun. hobby dorks and heroes of miniature excellence we're going to start a new video this one is going to be on the topic of making bases for your uh, infantry stands I've been noticing when I post my uh, photos of my work you know my infantry online I'm getting a lot of questions and requests to make um, a tutorial and I like making tutorials because I, I like sharing ideas. Um, I think, you know, if the internet's good for anything, it, it sure helped me um, with regards to my hobbies, making it more enjoyable and just, you know, the ideas people have are great, you know, and so I got to where I am mostly, <laughs> mostly by seeing what other people have been doing over the years. Um, with regards to these these labels, it's not the easiest thing in the world to do a tutorial on because I'm using Adobe Photoshop and uh, InDesign, which are sort of design programs that only designers use. And, you know, for example, my downstairs neighbor is taking a design class and sometimes she wants to stab herself in the eye trying to learn how to do things in Photoshop and whatever. Now. We're not doing particularly sophisticated things in Photoshop. Nevertheless, uh, to, to break that down and show you how to use things like Photoshop and Adobe InDesign, and chances are most of you don't have those programs. So what I'm going to do is just show you how I build it in those programs, and then, and then perhaps you can adapt it to whatever types of programs you have. But you'll need some type of uh, like a, a photo editing or page layout. Um, I work on a Mac, so I'm familiar with Mac programs, but I, I have no idea what you'd be using for a PC. But, uh, you know, a lot of the methods that I use for, for grabbing the, uh, say, images of, a, of a, a divisional logo or something online and, and, you know, getting the right resolution and, and, and that kind of stuff, you could apply it to whatever program you're going to use. Um, and, you know, and likely if you did know how to use InDesign and Photoshop, you would just look at the labels and instantly be like, oh yeah, oh, that's a good idea, I can make that. So, hopefully this will be a helpful tutorial anyway. Um, so I'll, I'll just show you some of the things I'm, I'm talking about here. Here's one of my... my boxes that I put infantry in. I buy these metal tins and I magnetize all the bases. Let's jam this into the photo view. Hopefully the light isn't glaring off the metal. Um, yeah, because then you can, you know, shake it around and your all your hard work isn't in threat of getting smashed to shit. So that's how I do that. Now, um, let's show an example of one of these here bases. So yeah, um, this is an example of one of the, uh, one of the bases I would make, or not bases, sorry, labels. I'm getting bases and labels mixed up. Mm. So for my Germans, uh, you know, there's a company sign, there's the Balkan Cruise, um, three Zug, two Gruppe. Um, Zug is a platoon, a Gruppe is a section, um, and I keep... The German's kind of generic. Um, I'll show you some examples of some of the other armies I'm working on at the moment. But, um, yeah, so the, the, the base is done. The figures I paint, I glue them down, do my groundwork painting and everything. Um, but I mark out the area that my labels are going to go on. I think I make them four and five millimeters deep by this is a three centimeter three centimeter base so obviously it's three centimeters long so here's a few examples of uh, different armies I've done um, and the different styles of basing so this one these are my Russians I've done it like a guards company guards unit so the guards logo is here Russian tactical symbol for a mortar um, you can find the tactical tactical symbols for many of the uh, countries and for the you know the World War II period online. This is a German. Well, we've already said this. The tactical symbol for an infantry. 
And then I couldn't find anything really for like Commonwealth. Um, this is a Canadian unit. So I just used the, the um, NATO tactical symbol. So that's a motorized infantry squad and it's uh, a carrier section. You know, this is what you end up with. Uh, a page and I just print them off. And then when I go to put them on the, uh, the bases, you know, you just cut them out. So I always make sure I have some duplicates in case I screw one up when I'm going to cut it out. You can also do like all kinds of road signs. Um, I do, let's see, I do like these little markers um, for ground hugging or, you know, unit disposition. That kind of thing are these little chits I use for hidden markers. You can literally just punch them out with a hole punch and then hide them under a terrain feature for like a, a hidden hidden um, deployment. Um, shop signs for some of my buildings. Um, yeah, so that's how the, the finished product looks. So I just get these printed off at uh, Staples. I don't even have a printer because I find the bloody ink for <laughs> it's so much more expensive. I just get someone else to do it. And it's All right, here we go. We type in a search for 15th Scottish Division because I'm gonna, at some point, if I don't die first, make some Scottish Division guys. So you go on to your search engine, whatever one you wanna use. Here we are. Um, and we go into images and find a nice large image. So here we got 1023 by 967 pixels. So when you jam that down to like a freaking five millimeter square, that's going to be a nice clear image. So let's go with that one. I want that one. Oh shit, hit the wrong balls here. This isn't an ad for DuckDuckGo. Okay, view file, hit that shit. And there's your freaking logo, very nice. And we're going to just save that image over here onto our uh, freaking desktop. Being a little bit anal retentive there, but hey, so just save it. There, yeah, that's right, buddy. Just fucking save it. There, fuck, Jesus, shut that shit. Shut it. What are you waiting for? Come on, jeez. Davies, your videos are too long-winded. Let's just get this shit on the show. And there we go, Photoshop, let's launch that bastard. Here we go, Photoshop, let's go up to the uh, selection tool and do the elliptical marquee. Jesus, why don't they just call it a circle? Get the elliptical marquee. So we're floating up here, okay, back to the select. Sorry, you gotta follow this little arrow around for shit and you know, what can I do? I'm trying to show you this shit. And this is the best way I know how. So yeah, make a little circle mark and then go under select and hit transform selection. This will allow you to fine tune your transform selection so that you can get that border. And so at this stage, this is selecting the lion. Anything inside the marquee um, is going to be selected. But Oh boy, I'm getting, I'm really fine tuning the shit out of this. Oh my God, there might be like a little piece that's without inside the marquee. You better fix that. Better fix that too, fuck. Okay, oh, look. Jesus Davies, I think you're getting a little bit too overzealous here with this fucking marquee, buddy. I can hit that. Oh, oh jeez. You know, this thing is going to be... Davies, this thing's gonna be four by four millimeters, buddy. You don't even have to fucking worry about that. Oh, too much art school, too much art school. Yeah, let's get on to the next shit. So we're gonna go over, go over to layers. Come on. Oh, no, sorry. I selected the inverse. So that's Command Shift I, or you can go up under Image, Select Image. Um, and I've made it a layer. Selecting inverse just means I've selected the negative space around so I'm and then deleting that out. So now when I place that in my file, I don't get the background in there. Um, typically that that logo had a black square around it. Sometimes it didn't. So this just allows me to change whatever backgrounds in behind the lion logo. And then I just go up here and 
I keep it as a Photoshop um, file, um, and that will allow that that space behind the lion to remain um, like clear of any any image. I think if I saved it as a JPEG, it would show up in InDesign with a white background, so it wouldn't even look like a. It would just look like the lion was in a yellow dot. And I'm also noticing up in the feather corner that I feathered the selection with four pixels. Don't do that. <laughs> Set that to zero. Yeah, we don't need a nice feathered edge on our 15th Scottish Infantry Division logo. I don't think it was a look they were going for. But maybe I, I fix that later, or maybe it just didn't matter when I shrank it down to the size of a pinhead. And then we launch InDesign, which is that little id logo that's bouncing around. And here we go next step and now we're in our file where we saved our logo we're going to open up that i just cut and paste a, a sign from something else um, and i'm just gonna lay down all my shit over it but it's it's basically a if you look up in the corner up in the upper left it's it's in inches um, but you can type in centimeters too if you know or you can set it i mean there's a lot of ways to do it um, you'll if you're using a different program, um, I'm sure there'll be ways to fine tune the box. So yeah, I've just fit that in there and I'm showing you, see, I can change the background with that particular file I saved. And there's many ways you could have done it. I could have just made the background black in Photoshop, or we could have made a circular um, marquee here and Im imported the image into that and changed the background. So there's a lot of ways to approach it. I just like to keep my blacks all within the same program because unless you set everything to, uh, you know, straight black, um, you might get uh, a discrepancy in black. So I just want to keep it all, all the black background in, in InDesign. Here we're going to do different fonts. So, you know, the fonts are up here. Um, this one is Boston traffic, but, you know, look, all these dumb fonts freaking... I'll look at balls see so the cool thing is, is you can go online and find a lot of the fonts that are like kind of typical world war ii fonts like for for british and commonwealth um if you could find like a futura stencil or something like that you know that'd be that would be perfect or you know there's some of these things that look kind of kind of hollywood war movie like um yeah good german fonts since we're on the topic of fonts um urbar and din were very common. So that that uh, that uh, Panzer Shrek beside the one I'm working on, that's that's um, din, D I N, and you can find those on those free font sites. So you know, free fonts. Just do a web search for free fonts. Plus, you know, if you're working on a Mac, hit Mac or whatever. If you're working on PC, you can get that shit and just load them up in your computer and fire it up. So I'm not going to spin around these damn fonts anymore. We'll get on to the next part. Okay, I'm going to, I've made a black box here just so you can see me make this white tax symbol. Um, so up here is your color palettes and there's a stroke and a, and a, that's the one that you use to make a stroke. The other one is if I wanted to fill the inside of the box white. Um, and there's a thing here where you can adjust the size of the stroke, like the thickness. Here's a line tool, and then just bang from one corner to the next, blah. And then we go back to our little strokey shits. It's already set to white, so we just hit, you know, 0.5. And uh, then we're like, hmm, maybe I'll make another little line just like that. And uh, I'm not going to get too deep into how all of this in design shit works. I'm I'm assuming you'll probably just do something like this in, in whatever program you have, like Corel Draw or something. You could totally do something like this in Corel Draw, I think. I don't know. I'm not a I don't know. I'm just coming up with shit. I, I'm not sure how this is just how I do it. I don't know. Fuck <laughs> I use this thing. And uh I'm thinking though there's gotta be other programs because yes, these these Actions are pretty simple. So you see, I'm just basically drawing this shit using the tools over there on the left. Um, there's different select tools that white arrow allows you to um, 
select the points and, and, and move them a little bit to fine tune. Um, let's see what I'm doing here. I'm, I'm recording this all after the fact, so I'm just talking as I'm watching this shit. Um, I'm, it looks like I'm going to group this and then I'll select this on the top and then these things up here allow you to align it. So I've just clicked the uh, center tool and now the little, the little freaking line on the top that makes that a company, I think that makes that a company. Um, I've just selected that and put it in the middle. So now I just deleted everything. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I think I was just showing you because I already had the symbol made. And uh, yeah, we'll go on to the next part. So once you have one, I just grab this thing and just hold down the option key and drag it and it copies it. And then you can start making all of your different units and sections. Um, I added a cat badge from this particular regiment. I can't remember the name now. I'm again, I'm narrating this thing months after the fact. Um, so then you, yeah, you just type in the sections that you want. I think ultimately I took that cat badge out cause I thought it was a bit too busy. Um, but there, you know, there's different things you can do. Like with the Panzer Shrek guy, I added the, the Zeitbahn camouflage material. Um, and that's basically just a picture that I grabbed off the net of the Zeitbahn and then I imported it into InDesign and did a gradient on it, um, to get that. Uh, so whatever program you use, you can, I would, um, explore all the different options you have within that program with things you can do with images. You know, you could do, I often do drop shadows on the text or yeah, like gradients on the, on your images. Um, and then you can just add more creativity to however you want to mark these things up. You know, the, the, uh, the guys over here on the far left are, are Hungarians. You know, I kind of went super geeky crazy and got a Hungarian army when all that cool shit came out with the, uh, with the Zrini self-propelled guns and stuff. So yeah, there's my Hungarians. So here I'm just, you know, fine tuning all of the, uh, the sections and, and platoons. Um, and then I'll just keep cutting and pasting until I end up with the full um, company or whatever size army you want to do. If you want to do a whole bloody battalion, you know, the sky's the limit. Um, I'm using uh, this bunch of uh, labels that I made for 43rd Wessex Division just to grab all of the various uh, tactical symbols off of so I don't have to redraw them all again. And you just copy and paste all this stuff and move it around um, closer to where you're working and then you can just pull the images that you need off and um, it makes it a lot faster and a lot easier to get this stuff done, obviously. So when you're making your labels, you'll probably want to know what to write on it. Most of the rule systems show you how to base um, the infantry for that particular set of rules. But if you want some extra info or if you're, you know, like us, me and my buddy, we just kind of, we use um, crossfire, but we changed the rules around a little bit um, just to reflect reality a little better. So I'm finding my uh, my website that has all these uh, tactical organizations and, and um, establishments. It was a website called Bayonet Strength. I think it's gone and it's archived here. The URL's up in the uh, upper left-hand corner there, the URL box. And it gives you the uh, the TO and E of like most of the World War II um, armies involved. I put in a slightly different web search and here we get a lot of other information on British infantry companies and look under the freaking images. Um, these are great, you know. This is nerd paradise here. I love this stuff. <laughs> you can see all of these things and how they're organized. This is an artillery battery. Oh, you know, this is modern stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, the web is full of great resources. So how can you go wrong? 
Alright friends, here we go with the next step. So I'm going to put a label on this, um, let's see if we can get some focus in there, this MG42 team. So you can see I've left a, a space for the label and just on my basing as per normal. Um, usually I put the labels behind the soldiers, but in this case they're prone, so they're too long, so I'm just going to jam it on the side. No big deal. It's all the same process. <clears throat> so you get your labels. You've printed them out. Um, so you want to print it on high-res printer paper. Um, I would do a test run with uh, just black and white normal paper. Make sure that all the resolutions on your images are good and, and on your fonts. Um, if they're not, you know, you can resolve the issue, get a higher resolution image or whatever. Um, if there's some troubleshooting, you can do a Google search, try to figure out what's going on. Get your file proper and then print it out on the high-res paper, especially if you're using your own ink. You don't want to waste a bunch of printer ink. Also, as someone that used to be a graphic designer, proofread everything. Yeah, and maybe even get someone else to look over it. <laughs> Because you might miss things, yeah, and then you print it off and once again, what's even worse is when you've got it wrong and you actually put it on your base and then you think, ah, uh, shit. So give it a little proofread, look at the quality of your, your images, and then use, I cut it out with scissors first and then do the fine cutting with a metal ruler and an exacto pretty easy but also make sure you print extras because if you slip and fuck it up you're going to say bad words and maybe drink a little bit so have some extras and then you'll be good and i usually when i'm cutting this way press straight down on the ruler and um, use a couple passes to get through your cut because it's usually when you're pressing really hard that the ruler's going to like slip and you're going to cut right through your label. And I'm not using the cork edge. I find when you use the metal edge down, um, you can see your line better. Like the edge that you want. So I do it that way. The cork does obviously, it's put there to give you a bit more traction, but... Um, it's harder to get your edge um, perfect, so. Oops. So, then once cut out, you just jam it in the space provided like so. And what I use is this thing that I've showed you before in my barbed wire video, I think. Maybe I didn't, I don't know. Anyway, golden soft gel. This stuff is the bomb. It's gonna set you up nicely. And I'm just going to water it down a bit until it's kind of like a paste. And then we're going to stick on our label with the golden acrylic gel. Awesome stuff. I used it for all of my basing too, like to put down the grass and whatever, watered down. Right, so just get a, you know, you don't have to use your best paintbrush for this, but something like half decent. This is an old paintbrush and I'm just going to use this crappy old water. And we're going to put it in a freaking palette. And then we're going to get a dose of this acrylic gel, see, about like so, and just make it into a bit of a paste, mix it in. It's got a bit of a tint to it, but it doesn't matter. So make sure you have like little picks and tools. This, I'm just, it's just a bit of blue tack on the end of this tool, and that way I can just like shuffle that off nice and easy. And then, so I'm just going to paint on, nothing crazy. I'm going to try to take out all of the big, Things I might add a bit more and just sort of work it in a bit. This stuff has a fairly, fairly good drying time too, so you don't have to super rush. And now I have my uh, my unit with my label stuck on it. Sorry, it's all blurry, but... And then I'm just going to get that lined up. Maybe use my tweezers. Just freaking set that down. And now that it's on, just sort of position it in a way that it's somewhat centered. You can use your fingers a little bit or 
these tools always come in handy for some little fine tunes that's already stuck down with quite a bit of force and then I'm just going to take this here cotton swab and just give it a little you know push it down to get all any like air pockets out maybe I should have used a newer cotton swab and there it is it's on it's a little bit uh, it's a little bit off on the corner there I'm gonna see if I can just push it with my finger it's still wet kind of like glue um, and there you have it oh, I keep moving it the wrong way so our uh, label is on um, it does have a bit of a sheen even though I printed it on matte paper so if you if you really dislike that you can pass over it with you know a, an airbrush with some matte varnish and I recommend I recommend this uh, AK ultra matte varnish this stuff is the bomb that's gonna set you up big time um, yeah so you can give it a pass over with that and it will take that sheen out so the only thing that's left to do and again this step is optional um, there's like a little white there's sort of like a, a white edge around this where the you know the, the white paper is showing I'm just gonna mix up my base color that I used and just carefully paint that out so um, I'll do that and then I'll just show some stills and then we're done this that's how it's done and then in these um, you know exploded pictures you can see the dot pattern from the printer but really that doesn't show up um, when you're looking at it from normal distances. These are 15 mil, so they're quite small. Um, yeah, there it is. This is the end of the fucking video. I hope you enjoyed it and found it useful. Stay tuned for more Hobby Dork Adventure How-To videos. Bye bye.